Right, we're outside the Dalgan now, and when I was a young lad in the 60s, the Dalgan was owned by two sisters called Tish and Annie Freely. And they were sisters of Paddy Freely, who had a business where Max Shorton is, and Mike Freely, who had the Central Hotel. Now, they did a thriving business that time, but like every other business, the fair day was the big thing in the bar business. And on the fair day, they had a shed down here at the back, and a yard. And a lot of the farmers would keep their cattle in there. And the buyers would come around and view the cattle. Of course, someone had to look after the cattle, and it might happen that a farmer had a neighbour or something helping them out. The farmer would win for a drink, and when he'd go out to relieve the other men, he'd pay for a drink for the other men, and any would give him a cock, or Tish would give him a cock, and he'd give the cock to the men. So when the men came back in, he handed in his cock, and his drink was there for him. And that went on for years and so. Eventually, when the two sisters passed away, their nephew Joe took over this building. He knocked it to the ground, and he built a fine structure that's there today, and Joe ran it for a few years, and then he sold it to a man called Michael Horn, who I think was called the Tudor in that time. And in the latter years, then, Margaret and Tim Byrne were the owners, and now it's in new ownership. Across the road is the Procol Hall. Now, in the 60s, there were two main things in Procol Hall. It was a cinema. Of course, we didn't call it a cinema at that time. We said we were going to the pictures. And the other thing was the snooker and the billiard hall. Now, the pictures were on a Sunday and a Monday night. They were the only two nights. On a Sunday and a Thursday night, you could go to the pictures down in the Star Cinema. Uh, the man inside taking the money was a man called Jim Cox, who wouldn't let his own mother in without paying. I remember one time, myself and Michael O'Connell were supposed to serve a station out the country. And that time, if you were serving the station in the country, not only did you get the day off, the half day off school in the morning, but you also got a fine breakfast with the priest out in the country house, and maybe a few bob as well. And the particular day we were supposed to uh, serve the station, the station for some reason was called off and the mass was held in the church. And Father Rush told myself and Michael, go over on Monday night and tell Jim Cox, I said, to let you into the pictures. So we went over and we told Jim, and Bill Grudgeon, he says, go on. So being right meant we decided we'd go up to the balcony. Now there wasn't ten people in the balcony, the film wasn't done ten minutes, and Jim lands in and he comes up, downstairs. So we were two disappointed young men at that particular night. I do remember when My Fair Lady was uh, opened, I think it was the mid-60s. I think there was five nights of that. It was packed every night, the hall that time, for the, for the, the cinema. Um, the man that was shown the pictures in the projection room was Bill Eagney from Clare Street. The snooker and billiard hall, the original hall, was downstairs. It was this room here. Uh, Cyril O'Malley, Willie Murphy, Cyril Kine, they were all brilliant billiard players. Billiards was more game that time, and the snooker kind of took over then completely. Uh, the other thing that happened was a few games of cards in there. In latter years, then, it went upstairs. Kevin Barry was the main stay of that time. Kevin would get everyone to join the club. Unfortunately, then, a lot of vandalism took place. A lot of the equipment was broken and so on. And eventually, the table was sold, and that was the end of the, of the snooker hall in Valley Hollis in the Focal Hall. Uh, other things, then, obviously, there was concerts and, and uh, plays and all that. But the main thing I remember was the pictures and the snooker hall. They were the big things. Right, across here now was for the Tig brothers. There was Mike and Joe and Paddy. And they ran a shoemaking business and they also did a lot of cobbling and so on. Um, I used to love going in there. The smell of the leather and the polish and everything it was an absolute beautiful smell. I'd say you could get high in it if you stayed there long enough. Like uh, They ran a very, prom a very busy business that time. And uh, when you go in to collect your shoes, they'll have your name will be written in white chalk on the bottom of the shoe and how much you owed. Of course, as people got more, uh, earning more money and so on, the trade began to die away because people bought new shoes rather than getting shoes repaired and eventually the business, uh, Mike died first, I think, and then Paddy died, and Joe sort of retired then. And that building then was the first permanent home as far as I know to the credit union. The credit union had a, had a temporary office up the town there, but this was the first permanent place they had. And it's now owned by Eddie Mulligan who runs his a uh, very good, uh, busy uh, picture framing business. This was the home of, in the 6th of Mike McGreal. Now Mike was a place where we all did a lot of shopping in because Mike sold lucky bags. And the lucky bag was a big thing. I think it was about two pounds or three pounds in the old money for a lucky bag. But the big thing about the lucky bag is that if you got the lucky number, in every box of lucky bags, there might be 20 or 30 bags put in, if you got the lucky number, then you got a special prize. The special prize usually was a cap gun and a roll of caps. So you'd be going around shooting everyone for the rest of the day. 
Mike also had uh, dishes of ice cream, lovely dishes of ice cream with a little bit of raspberry on the top. Now we'd want to be going well to have the money to buy them, but not time we'd have a little treat like that. Uh, Mike was also a man that was top man in the Pioneers. He was the head of the Pioneer Association for years in town. He also was in charge of the library in the Procol Hall. There was a library there upstairs in the Procol Hall many years ago, and Mike was the man in charge of it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that the McGreels were the family that had the Central Hotel before Mike Freely took it over. But Mike McGreel was a great house to go into. An awful lot of younger lads would go in there. It was a kind of a meeting place as well, and sometimes in the evening time. Right, this was the home of P.T. Lynch. It's in the 60s now, the first thing you'd have out here would be two SO petrol pumps. Inside here was the showroom, and there was big double doors at the back, so they could drive a car in, and the car would be in there in the showroom. Uh, Lynch's were the agents for Ford cars at that time. In the corner then would be an office where Mrs Lynch, Bertie's mother, used to be operating in the office. And out of the back then was the garage where all the men repaired the cars and so on. A big thing about Lynch's was at the back of Lynch's was what was called Lynch's Hall. And back after the Second World War, Ireland boxed Germany in an international boxing competition. Father Mansfield, who was in the Friary, used to run a lot of things. I know Ireland boxed Italy in the Friary field, but this was against Germany out here. And a man called Pat Kilroy told me he was at that fight, or that particular thing. And there was a German heavyweight called Ramek, who was undefeated. And a man, a guard from, I don't know, the Duke there are, the Roundstone, came to boxing, called Sharkey. And according to Pat, Sharkey was in town for a couple of days drinking porter, and he got in with your man, and your man nearly killed him in the first round. Second round came out, somebody tipped Pat on the shoulder, Pat turned around, and when he turned back again, Ramick was stretched on the canvas out cold. Sharky caught him with a haymaker. And Pat's one regret that time, of course, is that he missed the punch. But uh, Lynch's that time was a thriving business. Uh, Gertie sadly died a number of years ago. Iris, his wife, is still, as far as I know, hale and hearty down, and as far as I know, she's in cock, as far as I know. Uh, Lynch's then became different ownerships down the years then after that. My first memory of this building in the 60s was where it was owned by Michael Fahey. Michael Fahey had a drapery shop and shoe shop and so on. Uh, Joe Brennan from Cardinaden, remember, was a shop boy in at that time. Joe later went on working down in the Oak Bear for many years. It was then sold and bought by a man called Liam Heveron from Grand Lahan. And Liam opened the very first singing pub at the time in the 60s called the Half and Shamrock. And that time it would be packed every weekend with people coming in, listening to the music and the singing pubs and so on. Various other families then, I remember there was a man called Cahill Banahan was running it. There was uh, Crowley's, the Ward family, some of those, Des Ward, uh, some of whose family are married actually around the town now. Eileen and Sean are still in the town here. Uh, they, were, they had it and several other places. Eventually then Billy yeah. Nestor came along and took it over and Billy knocked it and built Billy's nightclub. And Billy's nightclub was flying for a good many years. The kind of password that time, did you climb the steps last night? There'd be the steps upstairs for the, for the, um, for the nightclub. Uh, Francis Kinney then had a restaurant in the, in the downstairs part that time as well. And there was also a kind of a... a, a, a um, I forget the name of the man, they had a, sh a shop in there where they had all sorts of gambling machines and so on. Uh, Billy eventually got out of the business here and he sold it on to um, different people then had owned it. And uh, now at the moment it has been closed for the last, well with the Covid it's been closed, but it was even closed for a while before that. I think it's a Bulgarian that might own it now, nobody seems to know at the moment, but at the moment it's closed. This building here, my original memory was that Conor Flynn was over the door. Conor Flynn apparently was a big businessman in Ballyhonas. I have a memory of his two sons, Jimmy and Paddy. They were two small men. They had a, f a shed and a field down the Doxford Road, where Peter Cunyon's house is now. And every evening they'd walk the cow up and down in here at the back of the shed to milk the cow. Uh, when they passed on, Paddy Ryan bought this, Paddy and Josie Ryan, and they opened the very first VG uh, store in the town. It was a big thing that time, a massive thing that uh, this VG was coming to town and so on. Uh, after a number of years then, Paddy and Josie moved their premises up the road there, a little bit further up the street to a bigger premises, and eventually then they built a big place there at the back of the, the church, where the super value stands now. Uh, the Phillips family, 
Uh, Brian and Carl and Noel then they took over this building which they still own as well as a place up the street and they also have a business in Claremorris. Right, this is Dylan. Dylan's was one of the busiest businesses in Ballyhorn for many years. Uh, and the down part we had um, a hardware where they sold paint and wallpaper and all sorts of things. And they also sold a lot of things like water glass. Tom McCormick, the late Tom McCormick who died there in the last year, was a stalwart of Dylan's. He walked there all his life since he was 13 years of age. And my, one of my memories of Tom was passing up water glass, sending it to England and America and so on. When tourists would come visiting uh, during the summertime or Christmas, they'd often buy water glass and Tom would wrap it up to them and post it off to the different parts of the country. Uh, Dylan's also, of course, was a travel agent. And travel agents at that time was a big thing. Nowadays, with online booking, a lot of travel agents are wiped out. There used to be on the gable, it's gone for a few years now, an aeroplane that was painted by the late Tom Barry from Clare Street. Tom was also the man that painted the Pint of Porter and Mick Mulhern's pub down in, in Clare Street. He was a gifted painter. Uh, the travel agency then, as well as that, they had a building society. And Dylan's then also, later years then, they had a hardware place where Midwest Radio is now. Uh, unfortunately, with times changing and with the travel agents and different things, uh, the business eventually was sold. And at the moment, there's, there was plan of mission to build a number of things, but as we stand at the moment, nothing has happened. Covid, I suppose, has been involved in a lot of that type of thing.